<laughs> YouTube, you've got to see what I'm working on here, okay? What if we took that old concept of cold fusion and we kicked it up by like 10,000 Kelvin using sauna luminescence? What if we did that? And what if we made it open source so that if something happened to me, humanity would still have access to what I've worked on? What if we did that? Guess what? I'm already halfway through that design. Check this out. Here's the reactor prototype. Here's the control box coming together. This journey started on TikTok, right? So short form video content, but it's time to bring it to YouTube in all of its horizontal glory because there's so much cool stuff happening here and it's about to get really serious. So I want everybody in the world to be able to see this. Couple things right off the bat. I wanna manage some expectations. First of all, I'm under no illusions. This may never work, okay? I will be super happy if, if nothing else, we just get a very nice sonoluminescence reactor out of this project that we could use for potentially other applications, right? The other thing worth talking about is um, you're not going to see amazing artistic video footage from me. This is my iPhone. This thing's in my pocket every day. This thing's with me when I feed my chickens, put my son to bed, kiss my wife goodbye when I go to work. This is my iPhone. It has a microphone on it. It has a camera. So this is the quality we're going to get, unfortunately, because I have to do technical stuff like this as one person and bring this entire thing to fruition. And I'm self-funding this, bro. So unfortunately, even though I'm very broad in my skill set, I'm not broad enough to do the really beautiful artsy shots that you would expect of a proper YouTube video. So if any of you want to join me and help on that journey as a filmmaker, feel free to reach out. I'm not opposed to it. I just have to keep pushing forward on this as fast as I can. And right now the iPhone is the way to do it. All right, let's talk about the GitHub repo for a second, okay? In the spirit of open source, I'm going to put all of these design files on that open source repo so that other DIY makers and other businesses for that matter can go ahead and build from what I've created. It's using right now at least the MIT license, which is very permissive. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is stay a step ahead of the GitHub repo, okay? So the idea is this, all these files are gonna eventually be on the repo, but I wanna make sure that this is safe so you won't get an update on the repo until I've ensured that what I'm putting up there is not gonna hurt somebody, okay? That's my reason for it. It's not that I'm trying to hoard my secrets or anything like that. This is gonna be open source, okay? But there's certain things I wanna do responsibly in this project. But Jason, what about all the stuff that led to this? How did you get here, you know? I wanna see that on YouTube. Well, unfortunately, you probably won't be able to. So I encourage you to venture out into the short form TikTok and Instagram and LinkedIn stuff. You can find me at I2C underscore Jason on TikTok and Instagram. You can find me at Jason Coher on LinkedIn, right? K-O-C-H-E-R and various other platforms. I'm on X too, but I'm not gonna go there. Anyway, let's walk through what's been created here. Okay, this is the reactor, as you can see. And what it is, is it's got two hemispheres. These are pieces of a sphere in there, driven by two ultrasonic cleaner piezos. Now, the goal here is that we're going to crush a bubble into a tiny, tiny, tiny hot little point at very high pressure acoustically. And that means a lot has to happen, okay? We have to use um, custom inductors with all this magnet wire that are adjustable. We have to use a very specific drive on these so that we can get the phase and the amplitude matched up. And we have to do some other electronic things so that we can actually stay on that resonance to keep that bubble as hot as possible, as small as possible, and focus that energy, right? Now remember, Old school cold fusion Lenner stuff happens at let's say room temperature or a few hundred degrees, right? That's great. That means there's a predicate for this device potentially working, but that's not enough for me. I wanna kick it up a little further, you know, maybe like a couple thousand Kelvin. Um, this isn't the whole way to like millions of Kelvin or something like that that you would get in a classic tokamak reactor. Um, this is different. This uses water so that it's uh, more intrinsically safe, right? And the particles are dispersed, so you don't have like a bunch of something that could chain react in one tight little packed thing. This is inherently and intrinsically safe because if something goes out of whack, the whole system stops working. That acoustic energy that's in a standing wave is gonna stop being acoustic and you're not gonna have any more fusion after that. So it's a very controllable fusion that we can use our microelectronic circuitry to throttle and get right where we need it. Next, what we have here is a central manifold. This octagonal piece that's machined here is the manifold. The idea is that if we change the two hemispheres, which we'll call them horns or bulkheads, if we wanna change those in the design, and this is gonna be a very iterative design, so we'll be doing a lot of changes, 
we can pop those off of there, put two new ones on, and not have to change our manifold, which has all of our other sensors and input and output on it. Let's talk about the manifold while we're on that subject. You've got a pressure transducer here, a sight glass right there, so we can see into it. You've got a, a couple ports that are just plugged that are unused right now, like this one here. This is the top where bubbles will vent out into another loop of the system. We've got a thermocouple right here. This is a Bremstrelung sensor, which is essentially a phototransistor right now mounted into the same little sight glass. And I made this in my machine shop here. It's a, a beautiful machine shop. I call it an engineering paradise. Anyway, made this sensor. There's videos of that build on short form stuff too. Down here, we've got a mount. Now this is just a 3D printed FDM thing that goes on a post, but we've got uh, standoffs here so that the high temperature of this manifold won't bleed through. Right now, they're just stainless. This is gonna be Gerolite or some sort of other fiber that can stand up to the temperature and not conduct heat into our mount. And if we have to, we'll machine this mount too. Okay, not worried about the mount. Down here, we've got our drain. So this is um, essentially a ball valve. And then when we want to try a different recipe, we will drain the contents out of this, clean it, put a new batch, new type of recipe in it, run the data again. Let's talk about the data itself, okay? What I wanna do is just a bunch of sweeps in CSV files that we can then pull graphs from and process the data using Python code and a bunch of other stuff. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have a microcontroller gathering the um, low-level sensor data, some of it using I2C communication, right? I2C JSON, see the link there? And then that data is going to be collected in a Raspberry Pi, which is a Linux computer, right? It has a sweet background on the Raspberry Pi. After we get that data stored in a CSV file, that computer is going to live in the control box along with the microcontroller. So anything that we wish to add in terms of sensors or other control is very easy to inject into that setup. We can either add it at the microcontroller level or in some cases add it right in at the Raspberry Pi level, depending on what we're trying to do. If all of this technical jargon's got you a little bothered, don't worry about it. Just go down to Google and an AI rabbit hole. Pick a term or a topic, you know, inductor, Raspberry Pi, whatever. That's my air compressor that likes to kick on all the time when I'm doing videos. All right, well, that's over. Anyway, if you're some kind of regulator and you want to mount up, uh, just wait a little while till we get this working and safe. It's not going to be dangerous, okay? I promise. Um, if you're a DIY person, I suggest you to follow along with the GitHub and try to make one of these yourself. Make it with me, right? All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up, but don't forget these shorts that led to this point are available in my YouTube channel. So go check those out. Don't forget to like, like, subscribe, share all the things. If you can engage with that content, it really helps bring this up in the algorithm and helps this low energy fusion project grow, which could help all of humanity. So you'll do your small part by engaging with my content. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, adios.